You're watching The Breakfast Club. Hey, good morning. We have Keisha Lance Bottoms on the line. Good morning. Hey, good morning. It's Keisha Lance Bottoms. What up, Keisha? How are you? This is The Breakfast Club. DJ Envy, Angelique, Charlemagne the God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you all. Thank you for having me. Now, yeah. tomorrow's the big day. Right? I'm already. I'm not even voting in Atlanta, but I'm already sold on you because I saw Killer Mike's uh, 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 co-sign of you, and that was amazing. Oh, he was on fire, and he really captured what's going on in Atlanta. So I am just so grateful to have his support and the support of so many other people across this city and across this country because everybody is watching this race. Now, why should the people vote for you tomorrow? I've said throughout the course of this campaign, Atlanta is a tale of two cities, and I'm the only candidate who's lived and worked in both those places. I grew up in Atlanta. I know what it's like being the daughter of a single mother in this city, watching my mom struggle to try and make ends meet and provide for us. But I also know what it's like when you are able to get on the other side of those challenges, and it's the reason that I'm able to run for mayor with the background that I have graduate of public schools in Atlanta, FAMU grad, Georgia State. I've been an attorney for over 20 years, a judge um, for over six years, and I've very personally shared many of the challenges of my family in the city. My dad was a singer named Major Lance. He was really popular in the 1960s. And my dad ran into some issues that eventually sent him to prison. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as fate would have in it, and this is the beauty of Atlanta, when I became a judge, I sat on the bench alongside the man who prosecuted my dad. Wow. And you have to have a city providing opportunities for children like me for that to happen. You can't make that up. And that's what's at stake here in Atlanta. Right. What's this city going to be for our children? I said, did you hold a grudge against the judge that sentenced your father? No, absolutely not. You know, I learned really early on that good people sometimes make bad decisions. And, you know, I processed it. I mean, what my dad, my dad was wrong. My dad had started selling drugs. And so, you know, he wasn't wrongfully accused. Um, but I, I now understand as an adult when people are desperate and they're trying to make decisions as to how they're going to feed their family, then they do things that sometimes just don't make sense out of desperation. But I think it really speaks to the opportunities we have to have in our communities for people like my dad, mm -hmm. for people to get good, solid job training, for there to be some other options. And that's, you know, really what drives me in this race, that my circumstances really, if you on paper looked as if I should have repeated the mistakes of my father. But when you are in the city of Atlanta, and there are people around you each and every day showing you there's something bigger and better than your circumstances, then it makes you strive for bigger and better. I'm a mom of four now, and I just want Atlanta to be that place for my kids. And I know that Atlanta's not going to be this great city for my kids if it's not this great city for everybody's community, and that's what's at stake in Atlanta, somebody who understands our communities and working to change our community. And that's why it's really important for people to get out there and vote. Why do you think that it has been so close? The numbers are looking so close right now. Well, in Atlanta, like so many other cities, we're experiencing a demographic shift. And so, you know, people still vote along racial lines. Mm -hmm. um, but the frightening thing in Atlanta is when you compare the candidates, it goes far beyond race. It's frightening because there's a woman who's voted 12 times for Republicans. We had a forum where she, we were all asked, this is when there were about 13 candidates in the race, do you think racial profiling exists in our communities? And she hesitated. She couldn't answer. Wow. We were in another event, and the question was asked, do you denounce the policies of Donald Trump? She wouldn't do it. <laughs> so these, this is what's at stake here, and the apathy in Atlanta is frightening because we've had solid leadership for so long in this city that we have had the, the great fortune of not knowing what it's like not to have good, solid leadership in this city. What? And I think that's why people are apathetic. Didn't she take some money from somebody, too? What was that all about? Allegedly, or did she really do it? Oh, no, she really did it. Okay. So we've had this whole discussion on finances, and then the city of Atlanta, you have to publicly disclose your ownership in companies and your ownership in properties. And she has hidden properties in a family trust. Mm. She has hidden companies that she owns. She paid herself $65,000 mm. 
from her city council account to her own company to do robocalls. And, you know, this notion that somehow the, the narrative is being created in Atlanta, uh, that people are corrupt and, you know, I'm coming in to clean up the corruption. Well, what defines corruption more than you paying yourself? You writing a check to yourself from government funds. And this is the, these are the things that we have to wake up and pay attention to in this city that – you know, we don't have some savior coming to save us from ourselves. We don't need saving from ourselves in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We have leadership right here that's able to lead this city. And my name is on the ballot. I'm, I have everything that's needed on paper. I have the work that shows I can do the work, and I have the vision. And I just think people need to think about what happened in November right. when we right. all went to bed thinking it was in the bag and we woke up. And Donald Trump is president of the United States. Absolutely That's right. Stake in the city. Now, is your opponent, is she independent? What is she? Because I thought she was independent. Is she Republican? She claims that she's an independent, but she's voted in Republican races that we know of 12 times. Wow. And, you know, the interesting thing is that she, it, it's convenient. So we recently had a secret tape that was released where she's speaking to a group of young Republicans. And she began the tape by saying, don't record me. So you know that's about to go real wrong when you start off saying, don't record me. And she talked about African-American voters, describing them as thugs and felons and coming in from closed housing projects to steal the election in 09, where she lost by 714 votes. Mm -hmm. And she also talks about um, asking the Republican Party to appoint her as an independent to the Board of Elections. So, you know, my thing with with her affiliation is if you want to be a Republican, be a Republican, but don't make it a matter of convenience. You're only claiming to be an independent because you don't think you can win um, as a Republican in this city. And if we don't understand what's at stake here in this city, it would be a shame in this country that Atlanta will fall into the hands of a Donald Trump. Do you think that it's uh, white people in Atlanta who who would not vote for you just because you're black? Because I mean, you're you're overqualified for the job. You're a product of the of the city, right. but you know a lot of people. Are, oh, she's black too. That's the main reason we should vote for her because Atlanta's a black city. But do you think it's white people out there that's like, oh, I'm, that's exactly why I'm not going to vote for her? I think that there are people who have been distracted in this race, and I think I don't think. You know, elections often fall along racial lines, but we as a nation elected a president named Barack Barack Obama, and African Americans transcend race all of the time to vote for white candidates. And in Atlanta, it's happened um, because we have historically had black mayors in Atlanta, but we have a demographic shift. And I think that she has really, to her credit, she's consolidated her Republican base. They are solidly behind her. And, you know, we're dealing with white Democrats in the city. And I think that's why this race has been full of a lot of distractions. Mm -hmm. But that's why it's extremely important for people to peel back the layers of the distractions and really look at what is at stake and what this means to our country. If you have a mayor of the city of Atlanta who hesitates on racial profiling, then we have some very fundamental issues in this city um, that you can't have a mayor who doesn't know if racial profiling exists. Right. True indeed. <laughs> well, go out there and vote today. Go vote, go vote, go vote. Keisha Lance Bottoms. Don't just go vote. Go vote Keisha for Keisha Lance, Lance Bottoms. Bottoms. Make sure you go out there today and vote, and we appreciate you for checking in. And yes, hopefully... it's a very urgent time, so we'll that's why you. it's really important for you to vote, as we always say, in these really important local elections. I know there's been a lot of gentrification in Atlanta as well, so you have to make sure you have somebody from the community that can understand the issues that everybody has to deal with on an everyday basis. That's right. Well, good luck, and we hopefully we hear from you in, in a couple of days and, and you'll be saying that you and want. Keisha, when we come to Atlanta, you got to open up the Chick-fil-A for us on Sunday, okay? <laughs> I'll do my part. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, there you have it. It's the Breakfast Club. It's Miss Keisha Lance Bottom. Thank you.